Hi Stitchers, I've just finished work so please excuse my appearance. Um, last night I finally finished my parking technique video which I've been promising for quite a while. Um, so I'm just filming this intro for you. Um, I was really hoping to get the video finished before the Heaven and Earth Design Stitch Along starts next month so I'm really happy that it's finally going to be up in time because I know a few of you wanted to um, try parking for the first time with that stitch along so hopefully this will help you um, some few tips um, I'm sorry that the video is a little bit blurrier than I would have liked but it was the best angle we could get the camera on um, and I really don't want to do it all again so um, hopefully it's okay I realized during the video you can't fully see the little chart that I made that's fun on the right hand side of where I'm stitching so I've put a photograph of it, of it at the end so you've got a bit of a reference point there you can see how I've parked the stitches and which stitches I have completed um, so it's all there also at the end of the video I have put photographs off the back of my work so for those new stitches they can see exactly how messy it looks with uh, using the parking technique um, now here's the disclaimer I am not an expert in parking. In fact, I'm not an expert in anything cross stitch related. This video was done because quite a few people asked to ask for me to show them how I do it. Um, so that's why I did it. Um, there are so many different methods out there and I've, I say this during the video and I'm gonna say it again. There's no right or wrong way. There's only your way and what works best for you. Um, if it, you know, if, like me, if it takes a bit of one person's way and someone else's way for you to find a way to make it work for you, then there's nothing wrong with that at all. Or you might be able to make up a brand new way of doing it. That's, you know, as long as you're having fun, then you're doing it right. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to say. Um, so basically, if, if this video only helps one of you, then I will be really happy. That's just what I aim to do is to help those of you that um, have been asking me so many questions. Um, so that's it. Hope you enjoy the video and happy stitching. Okay guys, so this is my parking technique. Um, let's see how it all goes. Hopefully you can see this all clearly and uh, apologize in advance if I you know, um, have to go backwards and forwards in my explanation, but I've never done anything like this before so okay now the first thing you want to decide when tackling parking parking technique is whether you which direction you want to work in so I work in 10 by 10 columns so it's 10 stitches across by 10 stitches down and that's called a 10 by 10 grid I work in one 10 by 10 grid at a time and I work from top to bottom and I complete a page at a time doing that uh, if you prefer, you can work from bottom to top, or you could even work from side to side. Totally up to you. And you also don't have to be constricted to working in a 10 by 10 grid. You can do 20 by 20 grid or a 30 by 30 grid. Um, it doesn't really matter. There's, there's no rules with this. It's whatever you decide. So, and you can even start a particular way. And then if you change your mind, decide to try something else, you can do that too. Now the second thing you need to decide on is the starting point of your cross. So for instance, when I stitch, I start from the bottom left corner and work up to the top right corner. This is really important that you stitch in this way every time because that is where you're going to be parking your threads in the very first position of your cross. So I'll bring this over. Now for the purposes of copyright, I can't show you my chart. So I've made up this little one here and I'm going to be showing you four colors. As you can see, I've already got, I've got about nine colors part here. So it's not very scary, only working a few threads at a time. Now all the yellow parts on my chart are where I have parked my threads. So when I get to a yellow point, I should have a stitch there. And they are all for individual symbols. 
Now I'm only showing you four colours because I don't want to show the whole chart, obviously copyright reasons. So we'll start with the first stitch. Just thread that up. Now I use the two-handed stitching technique and because the video is on my right hand side I'm going to swap hands so I apologise if I look a little clumsy. So what I'm going to do, obviously I start from the top left and I work across. So we're going to, we call this the number one symbol and we're going to stitch every incidence of the number one symbol within this 10 by 10 grid. So everywhere you see a number one, that is where I'm going to be stitching. Obviously your symbol won't be number one, it'll be something else. As you can see, in this case I'm doing individual stitches. Now you can do running stitches if you like or individual stitches, whatever you like to do. I actually do a combination of both. I have a look at the prepared design before I start and I sort of work it out in my head how I'm going to stitch it to minimize waste. So this feels really awkward doing it with my left hand. Right, now I need to, I've stitched all those number ones so far, but I need to head down to this one. So I just count the squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then I count seven holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What I love about parking is I make far less mistakes. You'll also notice that I don't grid. I never have, I never will. I don't feel the need to, I'm just working a small area at a time and to be honest I'm really impatient, I don't want to spend a lot of time gridding. So as you can see I've stitched all the occurrences of that symbol according to my pattern and I'm now going to park my thread. So I park it in the next grid at the very first occurrence. Now I've written down here where that particular symbol appears next, so in this case it's four stitches down and four stitches along. So I'll just count that down. Okay, so we park it there. Now I'm just going to highlight that. So I highlight everywhere I've stitched. And I also use my iPad for this now, but I'm using paper for you guys because obviously I can't show you the chart. So as you can see, I've highlighted that with yellow because that's where I've parked it. Then move on to the next symbol. In this case, it's number two. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch all the number twos in that grid. If I can get this threaded. Now, I don't, when I park my threads, I don't leave the needles in. Some people do, and that's great. I find that I got in, I did try it, but I found that they tangled up much easier. Just move that one out the way. Um, yeah, they tangled up much easier, and um, it just became a pain. That's my notes there. Okay, along to there. Oh, I'm feeling really backwards doing it like this. Um, how I maintain my threads is when I've finished working on a particular line, anything that I've parked that's in the way just gets pushed up and it just sits there out of the way. Um, I've also learnt not to park threads too short because the shorter they are, the more chance they will actually get in the way and be a bit of a hassle for you. So I'm going to end up stitching this entire grid Obviously you're only going to um, 
see where it's marked for these four colours, but hopefully you'll get the idea. This works really well with confetti stitching, so you're not constantly starting and finishing for one or two stitches. Okay, so we finished the second one within that grid. I've done all the number twos, and I'm now going to park it in the very first occurrence of the next grid. So in this case, it's, a, it's two over from the last one. So that's it right there. Take it off the needle and park it. Okay. Again, mark all those off. You don't have to use highlighter, you can use pencil. Um, there's some really good apps out there for iPad if you want to give them a try. Okay. You also need to decide when you're parking your threads how far down your chart you're willing to park because sometimes the symbol doesn't appear in the very next grid. In fact, quite often it doesn't. Sometimes you might not see it for five grids and you have to decide whether you're willing to park it that far away. I personally park to a maximum of about 25 st stitches, so two and a half rows, uh, sorry, two and a half grids. Um, I just try and minimise the waste, really, because when you're parking, obviously, you know, you are trailing a lot of thread behind the back of your work, so you're having a, a lot more waste than if you didn't park. Um, but I have seen others that will trail almost to an entire page and nothing wrong with that, that works for them. So that's great. As you can see here, I've just done a running stitch for this one. Didn't really think about that. I could have done individual stitches. So just working on the third colour. Oops. Let's see. Oopsie. What happens? It's funny when you change hands, you don't feel like you're quite in control. It certainly feels a lot slower for me. Okay, so I'm going to oh, move this one out of the way now because I can't see properly with that one there. And these threads that are dangling down, they really don't get tangled. You can comb your fingers through them. They don't get knotted up. You, you'd think that they would, but they really don't. So I almost finished this one. Stitching this way, um, I can do between 100 to 150 stitches an hour, depending on whether it's large blocks of colour or confetti stitching and also depending on whether I'm watching floss tube or TV and I just couldn't stitch that many doing it the other way so I'm really enjoying this okay so number three is finished and we're going to park that obviously it's 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 quite hard to follow because you would normally be looking at a grid with full of symbols so I apologize for that but I promise that you do get the hang of it. Um, all right, so number three is going to be just under number one, which is there. Park that one. Oops. Again, let me highlight those off. My messy colouring. And if you decide, um, if you decide that you don't want to carry a thread too far, I actually I finish mine off at the back. There are a lot of stitches I've seen that start and finish their threads on the front, but I'm still trying to get used to the messy back when you park, and having a messy front as well just didn't um, didn't gel well with me. So I prefer to start with a loop method at the front and I finish at the back by just running it behind a few stitches. So as you'll see now we're about to start symbol four and that's not highlighted. 
and it's not highlighted because I don't have a path thread there. So I'll show you how I start a new stitch when I can find which number it is. Um, it's hiding from me, okay. Now I like to reuse my threads as long as it's not um, too short I will reuse them okay so for those of you that don't know how to start with a loop method there's the strand of cotton see that there and you basically get the two ends together and you'll have a loop on the other end oops see that it's the two ends there and there's the loop on the other end so thread your needle and keep the two ends close to the end of the needle and with the loop as the longer end. Now I start my loops on the front, which I've only just learned recently, and that's lots of fun. So just go through your starting point of your cross with the needle and up through the next point. It looks like you're doing it backwards, but you'll see why in a minute. Up through the hole, and as you come up, you're going to go through the loop with the needle. You can see there, you've got a little loop on the front of your work. Then what you do, obviously don't pull that too tight, then you go back through that hole again, one you've just stitched, and the loop goes through to the back of the work. So that just, you know, stops you having to turn your work around all the time, which is really handy. So we'll stitch that. See, I've gone back to how I like doing it. My hand just automatically likes it like that, that way. Okay, number four is all the way down here. So what I tend to do in this instance, I'll look at the last part thread and then I'll count from there. Just makes it easier. As long as I haven't made an error on where I've parked that, otherwise these will all be wrong. But it's easy to fix. That's another thing I like about parking is if you make a mistake, you realize it pretty quickly and not 300 stitches down the track. Okay, now see how short that one is. That's probably the shortest that I will park my threads because any shorter than that, as you're stitching around it, it tends to want to get in the way. Okay, so we'll highlight that and highlight that. Okay, so I'm just going to keep stitching, obviously following my chart. Um, and I don't have the symbols on here, as you know. So hopefully this hasn't been too confusing. It's always hard to teach someone through a video. But a lot of you have been asking and look when it comes to parking I've said this before and I'll say it again I'm a strong believer in there is no right way and there is no wrong way there's only your way and as long as you are having fun and enjoying what you're doing then you're doing whoops <laughs> then you're doing it right I'm so glad I came across this method. I don't think I would still have the passion for stitching this dragon as when I started this year. Um, there's a hair on there. So please, if you have any questions about how I 
do this technique if I haven't been clear on anything please put a comment down below um, how I came across this technique for those of you I haven't already mentioned to is I did a bit of research there's a few blogs out there I can't remember which ones I looked at now I looked at so many so another thing I forgot to mention is this technique will also work if you are stitching tent stitch and for those that haven't heard of tent stitch before or have heard of it and didn't know what it was those two stitches I've just completed is, are classified as tent stitch so it's basically a half cross stitch you don't actually go up and then finish the cross so it's not confusing in fact it's a much quicker method because it will only take half the time and my next heaven and earth design will be done in tent stitch so I'm looking forward to giving that a try so yes as I was saying um, I did a lot of research there are a few other YouTube videos out there and I basically took a bit of one person's design and a bit of another person's design sorry I basically took a, a bit of one person's technique and a bit of another person's technique and found a way for it to work for me. Okay, I'm just doing this on my iPad as well because I'm finding it hard to follow just on here. It's really not easy when you can't show the entire chart and you're trying to show someone how to do something. Hopefully you'll get the gist of, um, of what I'm doing. Yeah, so I played around with it a little bit and just found what worked for me and I have so much fun with this it's very easy to you know if you think you've made a mistake and if you start stitching and think oh, is that the right colour? I don't think that's the right colour you can easily match up your symbol and get your bobbin just check it Yep, that's okay. I'm still on track. And when I park, I also like to sort of eyeball where I'm parking my threads. And I have a quick look at what the, what the colour is I'm parking it next to. And by the time you've done parking for a little while, you get to memorise the colours pretty much. And you say, okay, that's that particular colour and you can just check on your chart make sure you've parked it in the right position so I'm just going to do a few more stitches This is a um, bit of confetti stitching that I'm doing now. If you haven't heard of the term confetti stitching, it's basically lots of small amounts of different colours within a grid. And if you stitch the normal way, it's lots of starting and finishing and starting and finishing. And Oh, I forgot to mention, another technique that I have seen with parking is where people actually stitch row by row. So they will go along and stitch, obviously starting at the beginning, stitch every occurrence of the first symbol within that row, and then they will park it where it next occurs, and then they'll move along. 
And I actually gave that a, a try and it was nice and easy to stitch because you're not trying to squeeze the needle in between other stitches. But I found it more time consuming to stitch that way. I prefer to stitch cross country, which is stitching by colour, within the one grid. So I will finish this one off and I will show you the back. I know a lot of people don't like to show the back of their work, but I'd like to show you so you get an idea of what is normal to expect because it's not meant to be neat and tidy at the back. It, you just can't, when you're parking this many threads, there's just no way you're going to have a nice neat back. Or I just, I don't see that there's any possible way. Oops. Now sometimes I run out of cotton that I'm stitching before I finish the grid and obviously I, I finish it off at the back and then I just restart again. Right, and that one goes there. Okay, so once again, all the green areas on my chart are the areas where I have completed the cross stitch. All the yellow areas are where my threads are parked. As you'll notice. And I haven't actually had to move down anything to the other grid. Alright, so we'll flip this over. I'll show you the back. <laughs> 